Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to uh, Ben from Argonessen. Uh, this is my YouTube channel. Um, I'm actually uh, showcasing something, doing something a little bit different here where I am uploaded my most recent solo completion, which is this two out to handle on normal. And uh, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of just an ad-libbing over the video instead of like just doing uh, music on top of it, kind of going through uh, my character, the the build, and kind of the strategy on uh, how to complete this raid on solo. Um, so this uh, is obviously a really difficult raid to solo. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, especially as you get towards the, the, the middle and to the end phase of the raid, but uh, it's totally doable. Um, it's uh, something that uh, I think a lot of people can do. It's just a little, maybe it's a little bit intimidating. So this first part, right, uh, is just kind of going over and just kind of teaching someone the mechanics of the raid. And something I guess I'll say right here now is this is not going to be like necessarily like an educational video on all the mechanics of the raid. I'm sure there's better uh, videos out there already online, but hopefully this will, I'll be able to paint a picture into how to actually complete this raid on solo. So, uh, as we're about to step here into the the main the main room, this first part and doing the puzzling is pretty straightforward. Um, you know, you've got all four of these puzzles. You need to solve them and pull the levers, and you've got some forge wraiths, some tier one and tier two, uh, that will be spawning and trying to annoy you as you're trying to solve them. But uh, this one is, uh, or this part of the this first phase is really not too difficult. Um, just requires a little bit tedious as a solo. Uh, oh, we missed our jump there. Uh, <laughs> it was definitely pretty laggy this day uh, as I was trying to complete it. But uh, so as as we're kind of solving this puzzle, I'll kind of quickly run through this build. So we're actually a 19 sorcerer uh, with one rogue level, uh, so that we can trap during the second part of the raid. Uh, and so we go 19 sorcerer, so we get a bunch of caster levels. We're tier fiving the cold, the water savant tree, uh, so we can pick up the elemental weakness to cold damage. Um, increases our just single target damage on the on the main boss, since that's most of our where our damage is coming from is cold damage. And picking up, uh, basically going 31 points into Eldritch Knight, so we get a two second deflect arrows, and then spending basically the rest of our points uh, between falconry and a little bit into fade arc so we can grab the extra quality HP and sprint boost uh, from Falconry. So that's basically the enhancement split. ED split is pretty straightforward to what a typical caster is, except we're uh, uh, skipping out on the Draconic epic moment. So we're tier five Draconic, uh, but we're skipping out on the moment because we don't really need it uh, for what we're trying to do. And we're basically putting a little bit extra points into Exalted Angel and Primal Avatar is our third tier. So Picking up the uh, the mantle and EA going all the way up to tier four, and then uh, primal avatar grabbing the uh, the buffed reborn and fire, so we have a little bit like of uh, um, a heal ability that'll basically take us to full uh, <clears throat> when we're uh, low in HP. So the EA mantle does a lot of work during this raid because you have a lot of just passive damage. That's as you can see here the the starting to cook. That's will kind of stack up over time and so having like a passive heal uh, that is constantly hitting you is really useful so I think most people that'll probably try and solve this raid will probably try and use the EA mantle as uh, <clears throat> as the main source of healing so as we're wrapping up the puzzles here uh, this uh, this the, the build basically from the gear layout perspective is we're running the echoes of ancestors actually while we're doing that, I'll quickly cover what's going on right now. So I'm quickly swapping to the Reveler's Regalia so I can pick up the spell crit damage uh, for this first phase and go kind of going through a few swaps here. So I've got Ooze Swap on my offhand and then using the Call Lightning Storm Clicky that uh, drops out of one of those Evening Star chains, I think, and uh, getting that so you can actually debuff Ooze on a single target through that Clicky without actually having equipped. So it's kind of like a snapshotting effect so we can permanently ooze him during this first phase um, because we are trying to push him and get him down pretty quickly um, so that we can quickly get to phase two without having any of the cog spawn. So 
Uh, basically just DPSing me right now. Main rotation here is we've got Iceberg, Polar Ray, Autolux, then uh, Draconic, uh, Breath, uh, doing the Vortex version, and then both Ruins, and then we have a Kona Cold if we really have everything off cooldown. And so <clears throat> that's kind of your, your main DPS rotation. And kind of going back to the gear though, so we have uh, three-piece Echoes, two-piece Chained Lightning, running a Dino Belt uh, with a gem of many facets and then using the elders and gem combo so you only need the elders gem really to that's kind of the an, as an annoying piece to pull for this and then running goggles and gloves for lgs opposition pick up an extra nine percent hp and then uh call a cascader so the print part here as soon as you drop him you want to quickly uh this is why we take the rogue levels we want to quickly hit both of these control bypass panels and the breakers so that we can solve these two two of the puzzles up at the top and then this is when the raid gets kind of interesting is you really need to uh, manage the cogs and manage the trash here so things don't get out of hand because if you do start getting a bunch of uh, red names then it is very difficult to recover uh, from a solo uh, perspective so we're gonna throw down our main form of kind of controlling the the cogs, which are these uh, <clears throat> little people that'll pop out of these gates, is using our uh, uh, dancing spheres. So we're gonna put those out of each of the gates. And so you're kind of looking, there's five different gates that they can spawn out of, four on the bottom and one's up top. And that I actually got um, pretty lucky here where no cogs, it's, it's different. There's various versions of how they're spawning. And so, no cogs were spawning on the top floor so all you have, uh, in this run all i had to worry about was all the cogs on the bottom and so as you're getting 30 seconds every 30 seconds you have cog spawn you also have forge spirits uh tier ones and twos that are spawning and we get unlucky here with the red name a couple of saves with a <laughs> uh, couple orange names i think my dc for sunburst here was around like 100 or so um just to ride around there and typically it should be no fail on normal but you know people, mobs can still roll 20s so here we got the red name. So immediately, like once you have a red name, you really want to take it down as fast as possible. So I immediately prioritize that and stop with the cool tanks. Quickly kill that. And then as you're down here at the bottom, your priority is the coolant tanks. So these are pretty easy to solve. It's uh, left, right, middle for those that don't know, um, kind of the fast way to solve them. And so as we're going through and uh, you know, solving the coolant tanks, we're quickly looking for opportunities to refresh our dancing balls, kill large packs of uh, the forge spirits or tier one or twos with our sunburst, and then uh, cycling through. And if you have time, uh, <laughs> trying to fix a few of the coolant tanks. So there's a lot of moving parts here. You can see I'm trying to refresh and do a bunch of things at once, and things can get pretty hectic. And so the important part about this raid too as you're trying to solo it. I think this is my like, right around like my 15th attempt uh, that I end up completing it, is it is very easy to feel overwhelmed just with the number of mobs that are spawning at a consistent rate and all the different things that you need to do from a multitasking perspective. But the incoming damage on normal is very manageable. You can see my stats here in the bottom left is I've got roughly like 170 MRR, which is pretty good, but nothing crazy and some just general absorptions uh, that you can get on a Kenneth Crafted Gem or anything like that. And that's really everything that I'm rocking with in terms of defenses. Um, and so it's really not too crazy. We, I think we get unlucky here where I, get, I spawn another red with another save. Yeah, I think we do. And so, uh, like I was saying earlier, every time you do get a red, you really need to prioritize and kill it as soon as possible uh, or else uh, you'll uh, potentially, you know, the, the trash will kind of get out of hand from a management perspective. So we find a little bit of an opportunity, I think, here to disable one of the puzzles, but I think we have a red that spawns uh, due to another uh, uh, save. And so at this point, I, I see the cog spawn and I want to kill that red as soon as possible, but you really need to prioritize the cogs or else you'll get, when the cogs run and hit the lava, then they convert into an orange. And so <clears throat> oranges are, you know, 
not are pretty manageable on normal. You can insta kill them with a uh, sun burst, but if they do save and happen to roll a 20, then they do become a red, and you want to basically avoid reds as much as possible. And so minimizing and managing the cogs is on top of uh, killing the re the reds. So is just something that you really want to focus on uh, here. Like mana is something also that <coughs> is a resource. I I'm not sure how many pots end up drinking, probably a few, uh, during uh, <coughs> during this attempt. But the the important thing is is you kind of get into a little bit of a flow as you're doing this uh, raid from a solo perspective. Um, it's really difficult to kind of get that flow until you've failed it a few times and get further in the raid. So after I, I solve that last puzzle. The boss comes back up and he's at two thirds HP and you're still going to have Cog spawning and the Forge Race spawning, um, but they're going to be, Forge Race are going to spawn at a little bit slower rate and instead you're going to get skulls, uh, those flaming skulls that will spawn over the lava. So it, it's, I think we get a little lucky here, we go in cap, uh, that's why it's useful to have like the LGS and uh, have that extra unconsciousness range. Um, so things got a little dicey there, I think right here too, we get pretty low. But uh, a couple of self heals, we can go up to top. And so from the giant's perspective, there really isn't too much to worry about. He's not too scary, unless as long as you're staying close to him. Um, he does have his slam attack that if you are looking at him, is pretty easy to dodge. As soon as he raises his hands above his head, that's kind of your cue. And but if you are like not facing towards him, <laughs> then I think I get I get hit a few times here during this raid. Um, where, yeah, here, here's an example. I got knocked down, and you're knocked down, and there's no way you can't Harper pin out of this. Um, so it's like a permanent knockdown until the duration lasts. And so we had Cog spawning, and you really, like in this, I kind of messed up here. Like I got a bunch of orange names spawn here, and really just hoping that none of them save. In this situation, I think, yeah, it looks like two of them saved and we are in trouble right if we have two is very difficult to uh kill and with you out all this other incoming damage three or four is typically going to be a reset if you have uh three or four red names so at this point right I, i'm trying to kill them as soon as possible um before any other wraith spawn and just completely ignoring the boss and so at this point i'm uh worried that if more cog spawn then this trash will just kind of get out of hand so here we have cog spawn i am immediately trying to kill most of them it's okay if a few but like don't sweat it if a few get by that's fine you just really want to make sure that you want to minimize the chances that you have a huge group of oranges because that will likely lead to at least one of them even if you have a no fail one of them making rolling a 20 and then they become a red and then that'll kind of delay your game plan um, in terms of pushing damage on the uh, the Titan. So as you can see here, I'm not really focusing the Flaming Skulls. And so I think on higher difficulties, you, you really want to have uh, a caster kind of dedicated towards killing the Flaming uh, Skulls over the Lava, but on normal, their damage for the most part can be just passively healed through through the EA aura um, and a couple of spot heals here and there so your main for your main focus really should be on not creating any reds on uh, the platform and really trying to push as much damage on the boss so here the boss is like almost phased to uh, uh, one third HP and then he'll go back down and we'll want to uh, <coughs> you know, create a Titan here again so yeah your machines cannot save you is that q so he goes back down we're about to get another red forgery titan that'll always spawn here and this titan once it dies will trigger the giant to spawn uh to come up for the very end the last phase and then at that point your focus should be trying to burn the boss as fast as possible and while still trying to minimize the amount of reds or trash that you have around you. So here he comes back up, uh, <clears throat> trying to make sure that I've got enough mana to kind of go through this last third of the, 
the phase and uh, really focusing on So, you know, once he gets to this last third of his HP, it's really just a, a burn him as fast as possible and really trying to, for the most part, ignoring all the trash. Um, you're at like kind of that final stretch. So <clears throat> trying to manage, uh, going through all your DPS rotations, making sure that you're uh, keeping the uptime for the elemental weakness. Here I quickly swap to ooze, try and stack a little bit more extra damage on him but uh, once you get him to this point it's kind of like you're home free uh, you still want to make sure that you don't get slammed on because of a bunch of his coming damage here I get a red that spawns um, but at this point I'm so close he's at you know sub 500k that I just try and push through and um, once you kill him then all the other you know mobs despawn so that's a uh, yeah that's the solo um, it's uh, like I said, it's difficult, but it's it definitely is doable um, with how powerful characters are nowadays. So if you enjoyed this type of content, um, you know, leave a like, leave a subscribe, and uh, leave let me know what you think in the comments if you want to see this type of content in the future. So thanks, everyone, and have a good one.